The NetOp app that we have available in TLDSB on Chrome is a great one for use to monitor students and see their devices if they're working on a Chromebook in your class, uh, whether it's in person or remotely. And you can manage web links, you can disable screens, you can do a lot of that classroom management kind of stuff. But it also requires you to have the correct app installed on your device, and that's changed recently. So let's take a look at what that involves exactly. When I'm over here on our doc, I'm just going to go to Departments and Tech Services to get to where the actual information is. I'm going to click this first tile, Support and Login Resources, because all of our software is on this page. And I can come down and find, uh, alphabetically, NetOp. There it is. And we've got a bunch of support information here, including how to install from a onto a Windows device. Now, there ha was the Chrome information here before, but we've pulled that because it's not really valid anymore. And I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to click my Windows button here and do a little search for NetOp. And that pops the NetOp Vision Teacher app. So when I launch that, this is the Chrome app that we've used in the past. And the problem, of course, is this yellow message up here. Chrome, Google will no longer allow Chrome apps to run on Windows. We need an actual Windows app for that now. So what I can do if I've come this far is I can click right on this link here that just says to install the native Vision Teacher app. And that's going to kick me out to a website. On this website, I can scroll down and I'll find some download links. And since we're using Windows, I'm going to go with the 64-bit version because we're all on Windows 10. And I do specify that back on our own page here. If I go to our doc and you had come through our doc to find this information about Windows devices, that's where I've specified, hey, Windows 10, use the 64-bit app. And the link that I have right here, it's to the same thing that I just had up a moment ago. So regardless of how you choose to get here, I'm still going to come and I'm going to go to the 64-bit download and click here. Now, when I do that, it's going to show me here, go back to here, there we go. Down at the bottom, it wants to know, do I want to keep this or discard it? Well, I know what it is, and it's an executable file. It's going to install some software. So I'm going to go ahead and keep that and give it a moment here to actually download. Well, it's doing that download. Since I know the app that's currently installed as a Chrome app isn't going to work any longer, I'm going to go over to my Chrome extensions here by clicking on this little guy. And from there, I'm going to go ahead and come down to the bottom where I can see Chrome extensions because I need to manage these extensions. I got a bunch of extensions at the top. And then as I scroll down, there's a little break here and you can see Chrome apps. And that's where this is. I'm going to go ahead and just remove it completely. I don't need it anymore. It's not really functional. So remove. I want to get those confused at all. So that's out of the way. Now, let's fade away and take a look. I've got a little bit more time left here on my download. So I can go ahead and close this and come back to this page for a second. Now we do have a user guide here that's going to help you with sorting out how to do all of this stuff. And next to it, I've included a blurb here about the student Chrome extension. Now that is automatically installed for all students. So you should never need to come here and click this link or use it for anything. It's automatically installed as long as the students are actually logged in. Um, if you wanted to check that out, then certainly this link right here will get you to that page on the web store. But you wouldn't need to. Again, you shouldn't need to. It's already installed for students, and that should be automatic, as long as they are synced up and logged into their Google account correctly. And on a Chromebook, that's really all you can do. So no big deal there. I'm going to come down and click on the install uh, executable file here. And it's saying, hey, are you sure? I'm going to go to More Info and Run Anyway. And so once this has launched and loaded up here, I can go to my classrooms. I do have one up and running right now with a student in it. So I'm going to go to my Tyndale training classroom. Now, technically, I have two students in here. But when I go ahead and hit the play button here to get that class started, let's see. There we go. So that one loaded up, and this one did not. Now, the reason for that has to do with that student app that I just mentioned. This account is not 
technically a student account. I use it for some of that kind of stuff when I'm demoing Google Classroom things and such, but this account is a tldsb.on.ca account, just like all of our other staff accounts. So that's why. Whereas the other account that we see there, this Elena one, is truly a student. That's a tldsb.me account. So she is going to be there and is showing up properly because she does have that student app installed and running correctly. Now it means from here I'm going to be able to uh, click on her and go ahead and use some of these options. I could demo just to her screen instead of to all of them. I could certainly send a message just to her, send a link just to her, draw attention just for her. So if I wanted her to pay attention to me, I can click on that. And of course her screen is going to switch immediately to a, hey, attention. It's even got her name on that screen. Now, I'm not seeing the refresh here right away, um, but it is showing up on her screen that way. I can turn that off. I can come here and filter web things for her. And then I've got this invert selection option. So basically, if I've selected one and not the other, I can switch back and forth that way. Now, if I click off of her so nobody is selected, then all of these features I just mentioned still function, but they're going to work for the entire class. I don't need to try and select everybody to make that work. But let's take a look at settings here. I'm going to click the three dots for a moment, and I'm going to come down to more settings just to see what some of my other options might be. When this page comes up, I've got my teacher settings uh, available here right away, and I can decide to automatically start classes after opening them, meaning I don't need to click that little play button. So if I want to, I can go ahead and toggle that on, and then as soon as I've clicked on a classroom, it's running. So it just saves me an extra click there. I do have the option as well to automatically end classes at a certain time. If I knew my class was always going to be 45 minutes or an hour or something, then I could certainly choose that, and the class would shut down for me. It does prompt me with a little warning, so if I want to keep it going a little longer, I can certainly do that. And if I want to manually stop it, I can always do that as well. So this could be just a handy option if you're ever leaving classes running when you don't intend to. And then you've got this cute or stylish option, which is really kind of uh, elementary versus secondary type of choice most of the time. But really, it's up to you how you want to make things look. So the cute versus stylish just has to do with things like that draw attention screen that I clicked on a moment ago. The student in this case got the sort of goofy little monster saying, hey, attention, Elena. Whereas if I go with stylish, we lose all the cute little monsters and uh, it's just a little more mature, I suppose. I am going to allow students to raise their hand during class. That's fine. And then for student monitoring, I do have two options here. I can go and say show all the activity on the device, regardless of what's going on. Now, that does require a little prompt that they accept. If that's a problem, you can go ahead and choose the View Active Chrome tab option. Now, that's only going to show active tabs that they've got open. It's not going to show any other tabs they might have running in the background kind of thing. Um, but the advantage is that there's no prompt involved. So it's just going to start running immediately, which is what happened here. Now, it does say changing any of these settings could take a little bit of time, but that's OK. Um, I also have this filter web lists choice. When I do go into these settings, if I want to mess with any of my lists, I can quickly do that as well. I can come here and I can go ahead and create new lists. I can create block lists if I want to. I can decide what's enabled and what's not. And basically this, if I go to an allowed list, that is just saying, look, the entire internet is blocked except for these sites. Whereas the opposite is true here. I can come down and make a block list and say, all right, the entire internet is available except for these couple of sites that I've chosen are not cool. Um, so that's up to you. If you want to turn on and enable these, you can turn them on and off whenever you see fit. Um, but that is a sort of teacher settings and web links option that you have available here as well. So with that all done, I can go ahead and just pull my app back up. And at any time, I've got the option to come back here and go back to any of my other classrooms if I needed to. Certainly I can jump in and turn some of these features on and off or even switch to the dark theme if I want. So go ahead and mess around with some of your different options here and you're going to see what your choices are and how you can adjust things. But make sure you get that Windows app installed so you're not seeing any of those errors and warnings about the Chrome app being a problem anymore.